All right, so I've gone over a lot of different creative process models, different ways to think about the creative process. Um, and so far, all the ones I've shared with you are all ones that you would do by yourself, individually, coming up with ideas. Uh, there's the other side where it's actually group collaboration or, or creativity, uh, you know, known as brainstorming. Um, businesses have been using a technique called design thinking, which has become popular in the last couple of decades, thanks to a company known as IDEO and the school in Stanford, D School, which was founded by people from IDEO, uh, as well as um, the Design Sprint by Greg Knapp. He wrote a book that has caught on fire with companies, which is more techniques related to design thinking. Um, but they're all the creative process. And so I wanted to kind of touch on those because they have their own uh, nuances when you start to include more people than yourself. The big difference, obviously, is that you can have people doing the work of one person so you can do a lot more work. You know, if you need to do research, now you can have an entire research team uh, doing the research to be able to identify opportunities uh, in terms of that exploration phase. Um, same thing with the coming up with ideas. Now you have more people coming up with ideas. And, you know, essentially I've talked about the idea of like getting to your nonlinear thinking so you can have all the ideas that are available to you that aren't necessarily conscious well, now you're adding additional people and all of their experiences and all of their perspectives. And if you're able to um, collaborate well together and come up with creative ideas well together, now you've expanded your opportunity for um, where the ideas could come from. Just like the Uber creative process or model um, identify, uh, you know, design thinking is really all about understanding the problem or empathizing with the target. Uh, you know, really when we're talking about design thinking, it's usually about solving a problem for somebody else and not just for, you know, the sake of enjoyment or creativity. So the key is to really understand what, what problem are we trying to solve? And that requires research, it requires having conversations, it requires understanding uh, who we're trying to design a, problem, a solution for so that we can really uh, identify their unmet needs. And that can be um, that can take a long time. That can, be a, that can be a process in and of itself, just trying to figure out the vision, essentially. What are we trying to achieve? What do, what do we consider to be the success when we're done? And how, what does that look like? And so all of that is that identification phase where you're trying to identify the problem, identify the target, and really get a sense of what you're trying to do. Getting everyone on the same page and understanding the vision and, and you know, the problem we're trying to solve or the opportunity that we want to, to achieve uh, can be very challenging, especially because the more people that you get involved, the more people's opinions get involved. And so, you know, the goal for a lot of the companies is to try to come from the, you know, the, the user center or the customer centered perspective. What do they want? What's going to work for them? It'll achieve the business goals, but it also is really what they need and want. And so it's trying to get everybody on the same page with that. Uh, you know, so, um, IDEO emphasizes the idea of empathy, really trying to um, get an understanding of, of where the people are coming from to find those unmet needs. And the design sprints talk about mapping, trying to identify where in the process do we want to emphasize uh, an idea that we want to try and test out. Once everybody is on the same page, you've basically gone through the identify phase. You know what you're trying to achieve or the problem you're trying to solve for, and you have a clear vision of what that might look like when it's done. So now you move into the experimentation phase which is traditionally known as brainstorming, where people get into a room and, and you either take a board or, uh, you know, and just kind of just throw out ideas as many as possible, you know, no bad ideas here, and just get everything as possible on a board and then um, take a look at what you have afterwards. And that worked to some extent, but there's been a lot of uh, recognition that there were some challenges with that. And so there's been some new techniques that have been developed, devised to get the, get the best out of everybody without the negatives of um, traditional brainstorming. The good thing about brainstorming was that it definitely brought different people together to come up with more ideas. Everybody brought their own perspective and their own expertise. And so, you know, that, that was a really great opportunity to, to get a lot of ideas available to the situation. Second thing that was great is that it allowed for, you know, it recognized don't judge, just like the creative process, isolate judging while you're experimenting, while you're coming up with ideas. The downside though was that it could be dominated by the strongest personalities and the best ideas might never have seen the light of day because an introvert or a quieter person might never have shared because of they were intimidated. And so there's been some new techniques, uh, particularly Greg Knapp has had some cool ideas where you have everybody identify or generate their ideas first by themselves before sharing. So everybody brings seven to eight ideas to the table before beginning to share 
and then you can bounce again off of each other and come up with more ideas. But at least you're not starting with um, just the strongest personalities. Everybody's voice has a say and everybody's ideas are equal. After the experiment phase, which IDEO calls ideate and sprints call sketch, uh, is the assess phase. And this is where, yep, bring in the judge. Now everybody can, can get to criticize. No, um, but this is where everybody gets to determine what should go forward. Out of all the ideas that have been generated, you know what's going to be the thing that we're going to try out um, hopefully try out and not just take the production but but see if it actually works uh, get it get in front of people and that's really what SS phase is for most of the design thinking uh, companies it's about figuring out what to what to do and then making a prototype of it to get in front of users or the customers or their target and see if it was the right thing essentially assess whether or not their idea was right Again, I gotta give a shout out to Greg Knapp who wrote uh, Design Sprints because he's got some really cool techniques to um, allow for everybody to come together to assess and to critique and identify the best solutions without allowing for groupthink or um, dominating personalities or titles in the company uh, dictating what the best decision should be. Um, so his techniques are really, really valuable because uh, while working together, creating ideas, um, you know, for as a group, can be amazing and can generate things that you might not be able to ever do by yourself. There's a lot of pitfalls or a lot of landmines to navigate around because of everybody having their own opinions, and because creativity is such a sensitive thing. It's bad enough to judge ourselves, but it's really hard. It's you know, it's very easy to just stop once somebody else criticizes us or puts our ideas down. We'll just shut off immediately because. Being creative is very vulnerable. It's uh, We're putting ourselves out there, we're sharing our ideas, and there's a lot of opportunity for embarrassment, making mistakes, um, you know, saying something that somebody else judges is wrong. It, there, there's a lot of sensitivity around that. And so most of us have a that, that kind of like protective uh, layer. And so we're hesitant to uh, really express ourselves fully and, and come up with our big, biggest and best ideas, especially if those best ideas are behind the other ideas and they're just waiting to come out. Um, so I again, besides the design sprint, I recommend IDEO. IDEO actually has a program called IDEO U, which has several different classes that they can teach, including how to collaborate creatively, which I just finished taking. Um, I'm not getting paid for any of this, but I do find what they do very, very valuable. And so I wanna share that with you guys if you wanna go deeper with collaboration uh, in companies for creativity and innovation.